So, hi everybody. Um, my name is Tomer. I'm the protocol lead of Kutola. And today I'm going to talk to you about how do we use Ethereum to deliver UBI to any person with a smartphone. Uh, yes, we know it's a bit ambitious. Um, I'll start with a bit about my background and how did I get to where I am today. Uh, I started my journey of crypto somewhere around 2013-14. I was studying psychology and economics and I was surprised about the fact that in psychology we were talking about, so about social structures and as if social structure is something that is standalone, it exists in a vacuum. And on the other side of the map, studying economics and was surprised to see that we're talking in a, about economics as a mean to grow our product, not as a mean to shape our society. Um, in blockchain, I kind of like find my connection between the two, and that's what brought, brought me into Good Dollar and my past been to some other projects as well. Our vision, generally speaking, is a world where everyone has a crypto basic income and the financial knowledge to use it. The reason we are saying crypto basic income and not just basic income is that I don't think there is a more misleading term than the underbanked or the unbanked. It hints that if only you will give them a bank, you will solve their problems, something we don't really agree with. We do believe that by building a new financial system using cryptocurrencies and supplying UBI in that financial system and with giving people the financial education, we can break some of the problems that exist today uh, that I will talk about in a second. A bit about Good Dollar. First of all, Good Dollar is a 100% non-for-profit founded by Yoni Asia and fully supported by Ito. Um, we are 100% fair lunch. No pre-minting for the team, no pre-minting for the donors to Good Dollar, no pre-minting of the governance token, everything. All our minting is part of an ecosystem and an incentive structure that we have built. Um, so that's something that was important for us. And third, we are an open innovation, meaning everything we develop is an open source and open for the use of others. When we say it's open source, it's not because we think it's cool, it's because we truly believe that building an inclusive economy is not something we can do by our own. We want people to take part of our code and use it to their own vision. We need people to connect their protocols to our protocol in order for us to fulfill our mission. And that's mainly the goal of this talk today to find people we can collaborate with in building and fulfilling our vision. Let's talk a bit about our problem, the cycle of poverty. Poverty is a vicious, complex problem that is a bit above my ability to explain. But I can say, tell you that no one can fulfill himself economically if you need to think about how does he get food on his children's table tomorrow morning. And that's kind of like sums the cycle of poverty in my mind, in a simpler words. Um, we believe one solution to that problem could be the basic income. Let's talk a bit about what is basic income, generally speaking, and related to our project. It's about giving people cash on a periodic level to anyone with no conditions. Here is money, do whatever you want with it, and don't worry, you will be there next time you will come, if it's every day, every month, every week. Um, researchers have shown that giving people basic income helps solve problems of anxiety, uh, feeling safer, a better relation with the community, and at the end of the day, uh, fulfilling yourself as part of the economy way more than you could before. I think the best uh, article I've ever read about it was did you really need the research to know that giving people money will help them? Um, so that, generally speaking, about UBI. But UBI, as we know it today, has a tiny problem that we need to, to talk about. The real cost of UBI. So what we see here on the left is the safety net of the United States today. And how much does it cost? We're talking about uh, public um, housing, we're talking about medical care, we're talking about every safety net the US have created costs about 2.6 trillion. If you would like to give a basic income of $1,000 a month to every citizen in the US, it will cost you 2.4 trillion, which leaves you with basically 
three options of how you can sponsor that. One is additional taxes. Two is just give up on the existing safety net. Three is print more money. All those options talk about redistribution of wealth as a solution to provide basic income. We try to think about it a bit differently. We are trying to think about it from the perspective of wealth creation and not wealth redistribution. We are all part of the Ethereum community. We all know that if a community is productive, it has the ability to create wealth rather than redistribute it from other people. Let's talk a bit about how do we imagine that. So let's go back a little bit to Bitcoin and talk about consensus, for example. Um, consensus is, the meaning of consensus is social agreement between people. The reason today in the Bitcoin economy, we're all happy to reward the miners with, uh, daily with Bitcoin in a value of tens of millions of dollars. Over here you can see the chart, so chart of how much miners in the Bitcoin economy are earning every day. At the 21st of July it was, they earned $29 million. Um, but we, we are all happy to do that because they are the one creating the social agreement, the consensus around the currency that we all love and use that is called Bitcoin. The question that we asked ourselves was, can we create an economy where the social agreement is based on people's usage of the currency, where everybody can become the creators of consensus around our currency? When we designed that, we had three principles in mind of what was important for us when we are designing uh, the next currency that's going to be used as UBI. One thing, the first thing we had, we wanted to create a currency that is liquid. Meaning, here is good dollar, you don't like it, convert it to anything else you'd like. Not that you have to wait until everybody will accept it as a social agreement so it has any value. Here's your good dollars, convert it to Ethereum, convert it to CDI, to whatever you want, I'll explain about how do we do that later on. Second, it was important to us to create a token that is what we call stable enough. We are not creating a stable coin, we are creating something that is stable enough to be used as a medium of exchange. We did not want to create another speculative asset because no one wants to be the next person who will pay 10,000 bitcoins for a pizza. Um, third, we wanted to create a sustainable system meaning we want to create an ongoing model that is driven by incentives and not by donations. Um, I will go over about how did we fulfill our principles. What I'm going to say here is only the upper layer um, and I invite everybody to come and talk to me after to ask about the questions a bit more in depth. So we'll start with good dollar. Good dollar is what we call a reserve-based currency. So reserve-based currency, it's, you can always come to the reserve and sell your good dollars to the reserve. You do it pretty simply. You send your good dollars to the reserve. The reserve withdraw the currency that stands within it. At the moment, it's backed by CDI. And that's how you sold your good dollars. When you want to buy good dollar, you deposit CDI to the reserve, and the reserve will mint more good dollars back to you. There is, a bar, there is a curve that, based on it, we will, you will, the reserve is able to determine the price of the good dollar that you bought. That way, you will manage to give infinite liquidity to our acceptors of UBI. The next question would be, so that's nice, but how does the money get into the reserve? First of all, there are the people who are just simply buying from the reserve, and thanks to them, we managed to supply UBI. I'll show you the numbers very soon. Second system that we have is what we call the trust fund. The trust fund is basically a wrapper of other DeFi projects. So at the moment, we are wrapping compound. Stakers are staking their money into the trust fund. The trust fund is staking their money into compound. Their interest is being donated to the reserve. And the reserve means good dollars back as reward to the stakers. Basically, we're telling you, stake your money instead of getting rewards, whatever it is that you staked, get your rewards in good dollar. Um, that's generally speaking, I know there's a lot of questions about that and I'll be happy to talk over it uh, later on. 
Um, our third part of the system is the claimers. The claimers are people who are coming every day to our wallet, clicking claim, and they are get getting the pro rata amount of good dollars that were minted that day. Um, everybody has to go through a face verification system to make sure everybody are real people and unique people in our system. Um, what's cool about that, what I'm showing you here is a mock-up of our launch of V2 that we will, we will be launching in September. For the first time in a decentralized protocol, when you'll stake your money, you could see not only your APY, how much money you would make by staking your money, but also what we call the social APY. How much UBI you will be creating for the world by staking your money to the trust fund. Um, this is what is called, you know, everybody's talking about the double bottom line, and we are proud to have a double bottom line, uh, a decentralized bottom, double bottom line. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about what we have done so far, what have we launched, um, and we are still in a proof of concept mode. We just finished our proof of concept, and V2 would be when we launch our scalability solution, in a sense. I want to talk a little bit about what were the ask questions we asked ourselves when launching this protocol, and what were the answers that we got uh, doing that. So the first ask question we asked ourselves is like, does all the money flow, I just explained to you about works as we expected it to, or it doesn't? So we started with $56,000 staked to compound with the model I just explained to you about. We reached 220,000 people around the world, which was even surprising for us. And we delivered them a UBI in a value of $16,000. So that was our proof that, okay, like the, the money flow system works pretty well. And people were actually using this currency for over 100,000 transactions uh, till today, with an average of about 1,300 transactions every day now that we stand on. Second question is, has our stabilizing system managed to create a currency and not a speculative asset? Our market cap as of today is $166,000. We are proud of being so small and having uh, 220,000 people. Um, but our monthly price variation is of 2.4% a month. It's more stable than most of the currencies in the top 100 on coin market cap, but better performing than most of the currencies in the developing world, which is where we believe good dollar would be in use. Third thing we asked ourselves is, would people accept good dollar and start using it? And would it happen according to our theory of change? Our theory was that the fact that you have to come back every day and click claim in order to get your money, and the fact that you know, we're still in small amounts and it will be distributed between so many people, will be used as a natural filter for we don't believe Jeff Bezos will come back every day and click claim to get his money. We did believe that countries with high penetration of smartphones and in stable economies will adopt good dollar. The map that we're looking at now is every country colored in blue is a country where people are claiming good dollar from on a monthly basis beside South Sudan, Central Republic of Africa, and North Korea, every country in the world is claiming good dollar on a monthly basis. We have 80,000 people coming back every week to claim their good dollars, and I talked to you about the numbers, um, about how many. What was interesting is that it happened like we expected it to. Initially, the countries that adopted good dollar were the smart countries, the ones who were like, excited about UBI and like to talk about UBI, and it's really cute for them. But they got bored really easily because the money is not worth it. Second to come were um, Italy, um, Spain, uh, Greece, and Argentina, countries where UBI is an actual need and something they actually discuss as a movement. 
Third came Nigeria, India, um, Vietnam, and Indonesia. Uh, in Vietnam only, um, today it's actually way more than that, but there were more than 900,000 times people clicked claim to get um, their good dollars. Um, generally speaking, as I explained, our protocol is not something that can succeed by itself. We are counting on other protocols. We are counting on other developers. We are counting on the community to be able to deliver the vision that we seeded. Um, T-Stock is an open invitation to come to talk to us, to find a way to collaborate, to see how we can unite forces in order to get this thing from a proof of concept to something that is actually helping people on a daily basis. Um, that is it. We are hiring. If anyone, marketeers, developers, product people, we'll be happy to talk to you. And thank you. That's it. Um, if we have more time, can we have questions? That yeah? Okay. Thank you, Tom. That was a great um, talk. Um, can you explain a bit more about the method you use for checking that there are no duplicates and no fake submissions and all that? Please. The duplicates of the faces? Yeah. So our strategy in mind is solve problems one by one and maybe don't solve all the problems by yourself. Identity is solved with a centralized solution. they called face tech. They're giving us a pro bono service. Um, all the faces are hashed. No one is saving the data of the people who are going through the face verification system. AI system, going over it, identify whether you are unique or not. Pretty simple. What is interesting for us is the fact that there are other identity solutions out there that can easily just connect, just plug themselves into our solution and then deliver UBI to them. So that's about our face verification and, and identity solution. Uh, more questions? Yeah, just wondering, like, could you talk about like how people who are claiming UBI use it? Like, who is sort of the main use case of this? Is yeah, so that that was our main question. Like, we we were really intrigued by it as well. Like, we're doing a POC where sixteen thousand dollars divided by two hundred twenty thousand dollars is it's less than a bag of peanuts that we gave. What actually occ occurred that that was fascinating for us is. Um, they started opening Facebook groups and Telegram groups all over the world. And they started selling digital services that they couldn't sell in the real digital services world in between them. So what you see is like, I want to call it low-level logos being sold. And digital services that, that usually companies who have money will never, will never take. But that's usually what we see. We see, we see uh, the, the lower scale of digital services uh, being proposed and used as, uh, as the main thing that people are buying and selling in good dollar today. Which was, for us, it's good enough, as, as long as it's, it has value as proof of concept. Oh, and there's a lot of donations that are actually happening. We saw that's an interesting one to talk about. So um, there was a big fundraising happened all by the community to uh, subsidize the school fees of some of our ambassadors in Nigeria. And the community basically just, just like, okay, we have extra money. We got it as good dollar. But just, they just send it to the it was two guys that asked for it to just subsidize their uh, school fees using good dollar, which was pretty exciting for us. We're talking about it was a full course that cost them uh, $56. Not that much, but uh, I was managed to be subsidized using good dollar, which was for me very exciting. I oh, need sorry. you to. Hello, <laughs> hi. How did they subsidize it? Once they send a the good dollar, um, how do you pay the school fees or? So I think it's that what subsidize it. I'll go back to our slide um, here. Sorry. I will slide here. So two things that are subsidizing good dollar. First of all, the fact that people are buying good dollar 
and they have putting money in the reserve, the ratio between the money inside the reserve to the total standing value of good dollar outside is what we call declining. So initially, for one dollar in the reserve, we had one dollar outside. But over time, we print more good dollars. So for one dollar in the reserve, you could have 1.2 dollars value of good dollar outside. This extra money that is printed is being delivered as UBI and from our trust fund that is injecting um, interest into the reserve on a weekly basis now. So that how do you pay the school? I mean, maybe the school doesn't accept good Ah, uh, no, it doesn't accept. People, the, the fun part about liquidity, okay, and that's the exciting thing. There's enough to have one person in a community that understands all that. And he will say, well, I will always buy good all from you in a 10% discount with the local currency. And that's what's happening in Vietnam, in uh, Indonesia, like we talked to them, like how do you... How do you use it? They're like, oh, this guy is selling, like he's willing to buy a good dollar for us. For them, he's the magic man. You give, him, you give him the good dollar, he gives you money. He's making magic. He's doing it for a 10% discount that he's taking. We don't know him. So that's how they manage to pay. Uh, so it's fees. very it's very organic then. You don't have agents and stuff. It, somebody in the community just volunteer and say, hey, I, fully I'll organic. Your dollars, just give me, I'll give you the cash. Fully organic. All right, cool. Thank uh, you. Like we sadly still don't have uh, people to send for 185 countries around the world. But one day, you'll see. Mm -hmm. um, Uh, yeah, great, great product, great presentation. I love what you're trying to do. Um, what do you think are the biggest bottlenecks on growing it even bigger? Like, wh wh what are the levers to pull to make that happen? Or what have you run into that, yeah? So, okay, we need to talk about those bottlenecks, like, w one by one. Um, first, it's about the, the magic mans, right? Like, you can't create those. They have to, like, I can pay someone to be sitting there and buying and selling good dollar, but that's, it wouldn't give me what we've got. What you need is, a, is an organic movement to be doing that. And for that, you need to create um, crypto financial education. So for us, in our mind, the funnel that we want to move users through is that there is the funnel of a, from a user to a super user. Imagine how you use Facebook groups. You join a Facebook group, you say, oh, that's nice, but I have an idea of how to do it better, right? And it's because Facebook kind of like educate you about how do you imagine Facebook groups. You know, in our mind, this funnel of giving financial education um, to people would be one of our biggest uh, jumps and kickstarts uh, to do out there. So that's one. Um, Second of all, obviously identity solutions are a big problem. Uh, at the moment, as I said, we're using Facetech. Um, if you want to create an immortal product over time, that's not, a that's not a good enough solution. It's, it's good to prove your concept as fast as possible. So the identity solution, I believe it's not only a problem that we face, I believe it's a problem that, you know, the, our, that our industry faces in a way. The way I look at identity today is identity for itself is useless unless there is a reason why, it would, why we wouldn't like to lose your identity. Um, so we hope to become uh, partners or like players in that uh, area as well. Um, that And the third, we are launching our governance model in September. How do you get people to actually participate in that? I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how are you like funding this whole operation? I understand that like this graph and this part, but are you like you know are there like so this no, thing no, no, right? But is the initial capital are you just bootstrapping this or is this like bunch of VCs or like mm -hmm. you did like some sale or? Here we go. Um, so our founder is Yoni Asia. He's also the founder of Ito. Gotcha. Okay. This is his social impact. So w when Yoni imagined doing social impact, he didn't imagine it doing it as in any other classic companies. He wanted to create a solution to solve the problems and not just give money that will solve problems. So we're sponsored by donations, all sponsored by Ito at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
cool. And as I said, we are 100% fair lunch. Um, there's no, never was a sale of tokens, even Ito, Yoni, me, anyone else. We don't have any pre-minting of good dollars. It's all by the ecosystem that I just explained to you. Okay, so thank you everybody, and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>